I'm Sarah Wigglesworth and I'm Director of Sarah Wigglesworth Architects. We're a small practice of five people based in London. Um, our work is uh, generally around sustainability and designing ecological buildings and um, we are very interested in trying to uh, pull the mainstream towards the green agenda and to do that by making buildings which are very rich materially so expanding the palette of materials of green buildings using recycled and uh, farm products and things like that um, and we mainly actually work in the public sector doing schools and education buildings and things like that our office is quite interesting because I'm actually the generation of people where I was not trained in computer and I missed the computer revolution in my early stage career. So what's happened subsequently is, um, having found in my practice, I've never got familiar with working in CAD. So our office is a funny sort of hybrid where we work... Uh, with CAD and hand drawing sort of alongside and we offer and at different stages of the project we do different things with those things. In other words, CAD can be useful at an early stage of a project if you're doing repetitive tasks or you need to get quite detailed about something like a dimension or something or areas. But conceptually it's really important to be able to bash out ideas incredibly quickly and test things out and we always do that by hand so quite often we combine these things together now I'm going to show you a project which we were working on about five years ago it's for a little summer house on a site in the Cotswolds and we were using drawings here to test out a wide range of strategies for this site very, very quickly and see what they looked like. And I think hand drawing is really important for that in an early stage because you can uh, imagine what the thing's going to look like and what its textures are like and what its lighting qualities are like very, very quickly. So I'm going to show you some things that we were working on. The site was quite sloping. So we were looking at a drawing like this and you'll see that it's on tracing paper and actually what we're doing here is um, very quickly tracing a photograph that we would have taken on a site visit, um, possibly a panorama, in this case it's actually not a panorama but what you're seeing is a sort of the sloping site with the tree belt in the background, how the building nestles into the site, how it's buried into the ground, how the lighting qualities might work, what bits you see of the project like the big roof overhanging and so forth and that would be worked against a plan like this where we're testing out how the building would be sat actually in relationship to um, the physical features of the site like the trees or this big wall that it's hunkered down into and so on and so forth and there might you know the big roof would go over all of that and that's just one of a wide range of different solutions to this site this one for instance which you'll recognize because it's the same uh, trees and hillside reappearing um, ha uses the idea that the building's very uh, minimal and it's sort of um, in the background whereas the big move is this really wide deck that um, is anchored in a tree and hugs the tree so that we're creating terraces out into the landscape which allows you to get under the tree belt and experience it for yourself that way and that again that would be worked against various plans like this or this testing out lots of ideas chucking things out and actually the thing is that about I would say 90% of what we do is thrown away in this exercise because what you're doing is trying to establish what the key parameters are and actually using the drawing to think through the problem that's it's really important again here's another example of just a really simple little sort of shed type affair that again sits against the wall in this relationship so again you're testing it in terms of its heights and how and the massing and so forth um, but you know the drawing often um, goes side by side or alongside or in a loop with an idea you might start off with a hunch um, start sketching and through the sketching the ideas begin to arrive and they begin to snowball and you cannot have one without the other often when I'm teaching students sort of are very hesitant to put 
pen to paper because they feel, oh, I haven't really worked out what I'm doing. But actually the point about the drawing is it helps you to articulate what you're doing. It's not a one-way street, it's a total loop arrangement. And the drawings help you clarify things and they help you test them and work out whether or not that's a viable solution or not. So more, again, more sections through different parts of that building. I think, I think that's a really important thing. I'm very interested in how ideas are generated and designs are generated. And it's definitely that drawings are like writing, that they help you articulate the issues which are really important in the project to get to the the thing which works finally, you've got to have gone through a process of testing and you have, you're, you're likely to only find the solution after you've uh, gone through a very, very wide range of possibilities. And actually the drawings stimulate ideas. It's not, as I say, it's not a one way street. It goes round and round and round. And sometimes it oscillates with going to find more information or do some reading or, you know, uh, yeah, theorize a bit about it, but you come back with re kind of renewed um, energy ideas and vigor and the drawings then take off again. So it's very, very much a two way street. And I think unless you can do that at a really early stage of the project, it's very difficult to get people, other people to buy into it. You clarify what you're trying to do and you're able to articulate very clearly what it is uh, that your scheme is about. I mean, drawings and architecture are used for all kinds of different things, and I've concentrated very much on the very early stage of a project. But, you know, we use drawings, and they might involve sketches such as I've shown, um, to communicate ideas to clients, to communicate them to people who are costing a project, to communicate to structural engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, all kinds of different people. And, and different drawings do very different things for you. And that's why, as an architect, you actually need a very wide range of um, capability in what you can articulate. Yes, I do use tracing paper a lot because actually, I mean, you can, as I say, you can lay it over a photograph, you can lay it over a plan, so mm. you might be, you know, looking at something through something else, and that transparency is terribly important. Exactly. And I'm a real believer in trying to make them, you know, get down at eye level, really show how you experience the world. Yeah. Um, you're, you know, you're not a bird looking from above, you are on the ground and you're looking up at things. And that's terribly important. And and even this, you know, the textures of the ground and how the building sort of fits into its concept, terribly important.